Let's get real for a second. I know for a fact that you want loud masters. That's the nature of our ears. And you want your audio to sound like the pros, to sound as loud as them, if not more. And today, my friend, the plugin I'm going to show you, it's going to get you a lot closer to that goal without sacrificing clarity and also without distorting and all the nasty stuff. Let's do it. Watch me take control. This is the BX Clipper. Let me show you what I have going on here. This is a beat, actually. This is by far not the best scenario. I just wanted to do something really quick because when you're doing beats and you have to get those out as fast as you can, you don't have time to lose. And in this case, I don't even have a mix boss here. I'm putting everything on the stereo out, which is not recommended, by the way. I don't recommend this. But if you're in a crunch and you need to get something out super fast, you need to do what you need to do. It's best use before the limiter. So at the end of my chain, I have Pro L here as my limiter of choice. Also, before that, I'm using the BX Master Desk Pro. This is a beast by itself. So if you don't have this one, I highly recommend you get this one. But before all of that, in that chain, please put the clipper before those plugins. The reason why is because you want to control all the um, transients pretty much before hitting the limiter. Before reaching the limiter, what you can do with a clipper is instead of boosting the volume and trying to limit the signal, you are going to shop the transients. So what that's going to do technically is reduce the dynamic range. So you have more apparent volume as well. Let's uh, listen to this before and after really quick. So as you can see here right there, if you notice the input signal sometimes goes above the zero value here, but without getting too technical about it, what you see in the output here is that you're controlling all those peaks. So you're controlling all those peaks and that's basically giving you more headroom so you can boost a little bit more the signal afterwards. So with Pro L, I could boost the volume a little bit more now. This clipper in particular has a bunch of cool stuff that we need to talk about. Here you have three modes. You have the wave mode, That's gonna show you the left and right channels right there, what the waveform is doing. You have also a graph. Which is super useful as well. And also you have the knee. So this right here is hard clipping. What I have here as a 3.5 is soft clipping. You see that knee right there? And that's on the FED mode. If I switch to diode mode, it's a little bit harder. The reason I use FED is because I want to be cautious and I want to have a softer sound that doesn't sound too clipper in that sense, but it's soft clipping. So the fat knob right here in the knee, it's gonna give you that softer sound overall. You can set up a ceiling for the clipping to happen. But if you start reducing that, this is kind of the threshold for the clipper that's going to start cramping a little bit more the signal. And it's going to start distorting. So be careful with that. And of course, 
if you do auto, that's going to auto select for you the perfect ceiling for you. I'm happy with that. Zero is just fine for this song. So I'm going to leave it there. Input signal. You can boost the input. You can work with the mix. Play with that. And notice, please, that this goes to 100. But after 100, you have an extra 100. And I'm going to explain what that is in a second. And the output, of course, that's going to bring you, you know, to that final level that you want. There's also an auto trim here and you click on start and that's going to give you a trim of what it thinks is the best way to trim this audio a little bit more so you can get the optimal level. Here in the middle, you have left and right, like we have left and right, right there. You have mid and side, you can switch. So you can have just the mids and just the sides. And if you click here on link, it's going to work on those separately. Let's work on mids and sides so you can see the difference. I'm going to unlink these two parameters. So as you can see here on mid and sides, you can create an awesome separation there. Just imagine the possibilities for mixing, for mastering, you name it. Now, you also have here an oversampling selector here. This is to avoid aliasing and a bunch of nasty stuff that happens when you start clipping. Now, going back to the mix, because I haven't forgotten uh, about this, the mix after 100, what starts doing is folding over the signal. So the signal going above is going to start folding that and it's going to start creating more distortion in a sense and give you a lot more density in the mix. So let's try over 100% here so you can actually hear that. between zero and hundred percent, it's absolutely fine. Just be careful if you're doing this to entire mix. In mastering, I don't recommend you go over hundred percent at all, but you know, for mixing applications for specific instruments, you can definitely do that and get different sounds. Let's play with the uh, kick and snare really quick here so you can see that in action. And this one I have in diode mode, and that's a harder type of knee because I want, still not super hard, but I want that soft clipping a little bit harder than just the FET use. The FET use, I would use it for an entire mix, but the diode, it's amazing for things like drums as well. So this is great. And as you can see, the more you increase, it's going to switch to overfold. And that's going to fold pretty much those waveforms and create sounds that weren't there before, increasing the density of those sounds, which sounds pretty cool in things like drums and snares and all this stuff.
you see, this for drums, it's amazing. If you're not using clipping for drums, you're missing out on a lot. Never do this stuff in solo. Always play it in the context of the mix, in the context of everything else that you're doing. That's a quick overview of what this can do. He has a lot of other stuff, including the ambience. With the ambience, you can hear everything that you're actually doing, and you can use that as an effect as well. Uh, there's a lot more to this plugin that meets the eye, including colors. You can change the colors too. It's super cool on that side. Really enjoying this one and check all the other videos on my channel. I have a lot of them. And until next one, don't stress, do your best, be blessed, forget the rest. See you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.